everyone has their own answer to the question, what do you enjoy about cinema? Some might love the rush of an action-packed thriller, others see films as a way to pass the time. There are countless responses to that question. For me, it's about the magic of stepping outside our everyday reality and into fictional realms full of one-of-a-kind fascinating characters. And that brings me to the reason we are here today. Tim Burton. Out of all the directors and creative minds in cinema, Tim stands apart as one of the most distinctive and imaginative. His films don't just look different from most others. You can usually tell, even if you don't know much about his work, that you are watching a Burton creation. Now, I get it, his style isn't for everyone. Some people find it a bit peculiar or maybe difficult to connect with, but for people like me, it's clear that while there are plenty of filmmakers with unique perspectives, Tim Burton captures the essence of what makes storytelling magical. To truly appreciate Burton's work, it's useful to take a brief look at one of his main influences, German Expressionism. This art movement thrived in Germany between 1910 and 1930 and was all about conveying strong emotions over realistic visuals. It's where we see the use of distorted shapes, bold shadows, surreal imagery and dramatic contrasts. Burton has spoken about this influence in interviews, though he often downplays it, saying that he draws more from the films he grew up watching, especially the classic Universal horror films. I'm not suggesting he's being misleading, you can see traces of those horror classics in his work, but when you look at the visuals in his movies from the set to the character designs, there's undeniably a bit of that German expressionist touch. On a more personal note, I connect with Burton's work on a deeper level. From a young age, I never quite fitted in. While others were out dressed in tracksuits playing sports, shouting and running about, I was more likely to be wearing a dark shirt and waistcoat in a quiet corner caught up in my imagination. I would often dream of my own world, a place full of fantastical creatures, a home that was a sprawling mansion with a perfect dreamlike atmosphere. So it probably makes sense why I feel so drawn to Tim Burton's films. There's a quote from him that's always stayed with me. Anybody with artistic ambitions is always trying to reconnect with the way they saw things as a child. I connect with that more than I can even say. The more I've learned about Tim Burton, the more I've heard him talk about the worlds he's created, the more I realise we're on a similar wavelength. What separates me from a lot of people, I think, is that as we grow up, most people outgrow certain things, whether that's toys or maybe daydreaming about worlds beyond our own. They fill those gaps with other things, maybe it's alcohol, relationships, you name it. But for me, yes I've grown up, I've become more responsible, and I can navigate the world a lot better than I could 10 or 15 years ago, but I've held onto those fundamental things that shaped who I am. I still play games, I still gaze up at the night sky and wonder what wonders could be out there just as I did on car journeys when I was a kid. At the end of it all, that's what Tim Burton's films offer to me. A place to reconnect with that childlike wonder and imagination that I never want to lose. As I mentioned, Tim Burton's films stand out because they look unlike any others. He doesn't aim for hyperrealism. Instead, he fully embraces the fictional nature of his stories. Take Edward Scissorhands, for example, an artificial man with scissors for hands. The film doesn't waste time explaining how that would work in the real world. It's not about that. Edward symbolises the experience of being an outsider, someone who, despite his best efforts, just can't fit into society. Realistically, would there be a huge gothic castle right next to a pastel-coloured suburban neighbourhood? No, 
But that doesn't matter because in the film, that creates a symbolic juxtaposition of the lives of the characters. This same creative approach is why Burton's Batman films are among my favourites. He doesn't attempt to ground Batman in reality or make Gotham function like a regular city. Instead, he presents a version of Gotham that's deeply imaginative and detached from typical urban design. Burton's love for the past also resonates with me. Modern architecture often feels sterile and lifeless to me. Many new buildings resemble metal boxes with little personality. Of course, there are exceptions, but so often the structures that captivate me have been around for hundreds of years. I appreciate architecture that's brimming with intricate detail, something that feels like it could be straight out of a fantasy story. Even some of Burton's projects that aren't worthy of intense praise, like Dark Shadows or his Alfred Hitchcock Presents episode, stand out because of the distinct atmosphere he creates. Yes, the plots are incredibly flawed and offbeat, but visually... They tell their own kind of story, drawing you into his world regardless. I'm not someone who gets swept up in flashy effects or quick action. I love visual storytelling though, and that's not about CGI explosions. Take The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari, a film that's clearly influenced Burton. It doesn't rely on lasers or digital monsters, it uses crafted, evocative backdrops. Some might think those sets look outdated, but they do exactly what they're meant to. They transport you somewhere completely different beyond the usual reality. This may be a bit controversial, but while I respect The Dark Knight for its story and the performances, it's not a personal favourite. Batman Begins introduces Gotham as this decaying city with its distinct, moody take on the Narrows and a slightly steampunk-style train system that fills the sky. But in The Dark Knight, that atmosphere is swapped out for a standard cityscape, leaving it feeling more like any other city and, to me, losing some of what's made it feel like Batman's world. I actually have a soft spot for imperfect CGI, designs where the textures might look a bit off. Films like the Spy Kids trilogy or the Star Wars prequels may not have flawless CGI by today's standards, but there's a certain charm to them. By contrast, modern films often push for such high realism in CGI that Creatures look like they could walk right out of the screen, which for me, takes away some of the magic. The same goes for video games. Older games with animated, stylized designs have a unique charm, but many newer ones push for hyper-realistic graphics, which sometimes feels like it drains a bit of the enchantment. There's a point, I think, where people just want an escape from reality. People who aren't too familiar with Tim Burton's filmography often assume he just makes everything dark and gothic, all bleak and monotonous, but that view, in my opinion, misses a lot of the detail in his work. Films like Pee-wee's Big Adventure, Beetlejuice, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, Corpse Bride and Big Eyes are packed with colour, Burton simply uses it thoughtfully, sparingly, and always for a purpose. He often contrasts his settings with intensely vivid colours in certain scenes and then near monochrome in others to heighten the atmosphere and amplify each setting's impact. Even films of his with a less overtly expressionistic look still manage to feel surreal and dreamlike. That's one reason why I'm drawn to his style. I'm not one for the middle ground in atmosphere. I either want a film that goes all in on dark and gothic vibes or something cartoonishly retro or all of those things. I'm not much of a fan of the daytime. When it's bright and sunny, I feel constantly reminded of the grounded world I live in, one that, frankly, could use a few more 
quirky characters and interesting twists. Sunny days come with this pressure to get outside and make the most of it, but to me it's a bit deflating. Night, on the other hand, is when I feel truly at home, when everyone's asleep, the world feels like it's entirely mine, as if I've stepped into a world free from human influence, with only the stars watching over. Of course, there are times I enjoy daylight too, but mostly when it's foggy, raining, or even snowy, these weather patterns seem to dampen the rush of daily life, and I find something incredibly comforting in that. A fog-filled view or a snowfall reminds me of stories, some that fill you with hope, like the magic of snow, and others that carry a pleasantly spooky feel, like a misty landscape. That said, I'd probably appreciate bright, sunny days more if my surroundings were just right. No construction work cluttering up the view, no traffic jams, almost like living in a perfectly crafted Lego-style world. If I could look around and see that idealised, cartoonishly retro landscape instead, then I'd say, bring on the sun. But visuals aren't the whole story with Burton, his characters are just as defining. Some are his own creations, others are adapted, but he always shapes them to align with the kind of characters he loves to bring to life. He's particular about the projects he signs on to, and when you see a pattern in his protagonists, it's absolutely by design. He gravitates towards stories about outsiders, people who can't quite fit in, and that reflects not only his sensibilities, but my own as well. He explores how these characters are different, and the ways the world views and reacts to that difference. Nowadays, we see social movements springing up everywhere, often driven by the desire to influence, push messages, and bring change. These groups sometimes call Burton a fake outsider, or argue that he's more pro-establishment than he seems, but as someone who feels completely in sync with Burton's perspective, I understand that he isn't promoting establishment ideals, nor is he trying to disrupt them. He portrays outcasts interacting with society, ultimately realising that they don't fit with its norms, and then choosing to create a life independent of it all. Today's progressives might say, I don't like how things are, so I'll change them. But Tim's view is different. He respects the conventional world as it is, understanding that most people are comfortable within it, and they're not at fault for that. In Edward Scissorhands, for instance, the suburban town looks like a cookie-cutter neighbourhood, but it's stylized in its own beautifully exaggerated way. His characters don't take from others, they go their own way and carve out their own lives. And of course, there's Danny Elfman, who deserves a video of his own. Elfman's scores elevate Burton's worlds from something we just see to something we truly feel. With sweeping melodies and haunting undertones, Elfman's music gives the worlds Burton creates a voice, adding that final layer of immersion that makes us experience every emotion right alongside the characters. So Tim Burton, my message to you is this, thank you for making me proud to be strange and unusual. Tell me what you think about all of this in the comments section down below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Take care.